what types of services is paramount. Um, somehow, I believe uh, one of the things that uh, we need to strengthen was um, the capacity of uh, understanding and the knowledge of persons with disability uh, to be able to make decisions um, and also in the level of um, their understanding that they can be uh, part of um, the society we live in, also contribute um, in terms of um, um, accessibility around health, uh, education, um, also um, encountering uh, the, the networks on the ground, uh, strengthening partnership in terms of uh, what are the uh, in terms of the um, I would say the organization within the community that they can be um, can be part of. So I believe this this is one of the um, the strength that we need to encounter on on this on this on CBR. Um, from FDPF, um, I would share that um, th- this year we we've worked on our on our strategic plan for the next uh, five years. One of the ca- countering factors was on the CBID, so strengthening of our branches uh, on the engagement where uh, activities and developing formal system for for their activity to be um, so strengthening ideas and um, their knowledge to be strengthened in terms of how well we keep they are um, other government or other stakeholders uh, part of the organization within uh, the community. So I think it's a fact that we see an um, encounter in the family uh, or on our city. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Savannah. Um, I, I can see, and, and thank you to Orlia uh, and Jay. Uh, Orlia, from your perspective, is working now engaged in, especially uh, for the, um, the, the current work around uh, the COVID-19 response. Um, I know that you are engaged uh, in relation to uh, supporting in terms of data, in terms of information that goes up on the PPEs. Uh, also, I think talking about the rations, uh, there's been a spirit, so you could touch on that in, in terms of what FDPF is doing, ensuring that persons with disabilities are supporting them down at the, at the community or grassroots level. Uh, and to Jay, thank you, Jay and Sassila, uh, for also joining us. Uh, Jay, after, or let probably just give a heads up in terms of free in, in that regard, if you could also, um, then, uh, give a brief, uh, Jay, in relation to the the the, the um, DRR program. Right? When it comes to disaster in the community, you know how how is the community engaged uh, to ensure uh, that they're part of it? And also, uh, Jay, in terms of uh, what else could your program do? Or what else could uh, AHP do? Uh, what else could uh, our global partners do? What else could the UN agencies do? Considering that the, these um, dialogues are recorded, these dialogues actually, uh, you know, have been supported through GN, uh, um, uh, you know, CBR Global Network, CBR slash CBID Global Network, in, in preparation for uh, the conference early next year. And I'm hoping in terms of our voices, our platforms, how do you want, you know, how do you want to maneuver uh, the, uh, you know, our, our partners, you know, from an international aspect, you know, down to the region, right down to national. And all the way down to the community, so that there is, uh, you know, there is this uh, um, one collaborative efforts uh, happening. There's an upward in terms of reporting. There's an upward informing, and then there's a downward re- resource. So here's an opportunity, uh, um, Leah J and uh, and uh, say, uh, in terms of you know the different piece of work that you put. Of the expert question one is because it talks about example in terms of how you see our program. And please note that uh, all your programs are part of CBI-CBID. 
because you as a as a national organization actually implementing programs to go right down the community. You're actually going out there providing this support. So it'll be interesting, it'll also be useful and very helpful uh, to hear from your contribution. I must uh, thank Savaira in terms of taking lead uh, in this aspect, considering that you you now have a vibrant young team uh, that is actually managing uh, and uh, growing the, the, the reach of the organization. So, uh, Jay, um, Olya and uh, Anasedi, is there any uh, addition to question one, which is actually on the screen? Mubula um, everyone in the forum. Uh, is, is a question relayed from Josh Club. I'd like to add on about the WHO work that we did uh, during COVID, during the lockdown, and uh, the on-the-ground work. That was done in the community. My um, my input into that program was data and the availability of data and the importance of formalizing the data. A data system that um, most of the OPDs um, kept was uh, not updated to the fact that it was updated to the date or to the year. Uh, most of the data was um, was uh, was captured during registration, and that was probably just the data. So, so one of the important aspects of uh, community-based work is the data that we have in the in, in, in within the offices, within the offices of the OPDs. Uh, it's, it's quite re- it's um, it's very relevant to have this because it ensures that you are doing um, justice to to the donors. Updating of data is is done every um, every so often should be done every so often because it is uh, based on the work that we do. Uh, we we can only advocate and um, make awareness and ensure that. Uh, the data is real when we update data and the, the, the updated phone calls. They had to be, we had to, we had to make a centralized data system for all of the DPOs. So we gathered, um, the data from the five DPOs inclusive of, uh, the counter stroke and VT spinal. Um, most of the data that we collected on the ground while um, we were on lockdown, we had to get contact with the contacts of the provincial offices uh, because we wanted to distribute food rations across the border. So we had to get in contact with the village nurses. And then the village nurses gave this data. And most data that we collected during WHO uh, food distribution, during the WHO project in the food distribution, was unregistered within the DPOs. This was newly identified members, uh, most of them in the village. So, and most of them, um, intellectual impairments that were not identified. So this, uh, because they were not relevant to any other OPDs uh, in, in, in Fiji, we, they became members of, they were, they had to come under um, Fiji Disabled People's Federation is the host organization. So, uh, most that were identified as stroke members newly, newly identified were then flagged to, to counter stroke and, uh, those with physical impairments to SIA. And most of these, uh, OPDs did not have this, all these, uh, registration, eh? all these names registered in their data listing. So those were one of the fields, one of the very important aspects before we went out on distribution. We had to get the, ra- the data right and the, the setup of the, of the centralized system. Uh, we made it into access. We, we ensured that it was on an access uh, platform, the access um, software, so that we could identify whenever they are assisted their assistance date goes back into that system so that when we search again, when we update the system, we know what projects they have been assisted and when they have been assisted and on what um, on what uh, platform they've been assisted, whether it's through the COVID or disaster 
or any of those others. So any addition to